Hi everyone, Drain the Neo Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of the new Perfume Genius album, No Shape. Singer-songwriter Mike Hadrius has released his fourth album under the Perfume Genius name, and it's been amazing watching Mike's progression over this handful of records, starting with the very minimal and lo-fi and simple but vulnerable and emotional and powerful learning in 2010, and then seeing the sound that he delivered on that record gain vivid fidelity and a greater instrumental backing on his next record, my personal favorite in the Perfume Genius discog, Put Your Back Into It. Mike's next record, Too Bright, had an even grander instrumental presentation, a lot of additional strings in the mix on this LP, and this album also showed Mike moving in a slightly more conventional direction with how he was structuring his songs, bigger hooks on this thing for sure, while still bringing a lot of that emotional potency that I would typically expect from a perfume genius track, uh, coming mostly from Mike's very pained and nasally vocals that are heavy with vibrato. Now, considering the direction Mike moved in with his last record, I kind of anticipated his next album would be even more conventional, to the point where I might even be a little disappointed in how conventional it is. But instead, uh, <laughs> he delivers a left hook and a definite surprise on this record. Hands down, this is Mike's longest and most stylistically varied album under the Perfume Genius name so far. Really, this thing is all over the place. It's hard to pigeonhole, it's hard to get a grip of, it's slippery as a holistic listening experience. It's to the point where the sonic and stylistic inconsistency seems purposefully disorienting. Disorienting being the message that is delivered right on the introductory track, Other Side, which at first sounds like another very distant, somewhat lo-fi, Mike Hadrius piano ballad, very simple, very sad, 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 but then just uh, <laughs> Uh, a few bars into the track, outbursts this huge, gigantic wall of synthesizers and bass and a variety of other tingling, tangling, ring-a-ding-ding-ding-dingling sounds. Like, it is a huge, glistening, just sheet of... <laughs> it's maddening. I mean, how hard the instrumentation hits at this point on the track. It's like he drops a freaking Moab. But clearly, Mike is trying to communicate to us right from the gate that this is going to be a bigger, grander record. And as I said, it is bigger, certainly with the breadth of emotions and musical styles covered on this thing. The song Just Like Love, real highlight for me on this record, has this supremely romantic vibe to it. This thing is like, it's like wine and fresh pasta in Tuscany with Bay. The grooves on this thing are sensual, they're refined, uh, the string sections on this thing, super classy. The way Mike's vocals fly in, uh, so effervescently, so bubbly, uh, with some nice, very, very nice vocal harmonies. Just like love. It's one of the sweetest sounds I've heard on a Perfume Genius album so far, and there's some nice touches of, of slightly reverbed synth that would work very snugly into a Kate Bush instrumental. The song Go Ahead, uh, I admire it as being incredibly unique in the track listing here, but I have to say, since first hearing it, it still hasn't grown on me all that much. The very sporadic and odd grooves of the rhythms on this track just do not gel with me all that much, though I do think that Mike's vocals and his vocal harmonies on this cut do add a lot to the track, do sweeten the song quite a bit. A big change of pace coming immediately after this track in the shape of the song Valley, a 3-4 track that is very patient, very hypnotic, folky. I love the guitar structure on this track, it just really gets me into a, a bit of a, a, a lull. My head goes almost blank, I'm taken away by Mike's vocals. The instrumentation blossoms gorgeously in the second half of the track. The guitars, Mike's vocals on this track, they just feel so close, so warm, so enveloping. Contrast that with the huge, the over-the-top, the gigantic wreath, which is easily one of the brightest, catchiest, and most uplifting songs I've heard on one of Mike's records. Not only that, but there's like a real sense of swagger that comes through on the hook for me especially like with that very hard, very fast, very uh, decisively played guitar lead uh, brown, brown, that pops out in the hook as Mike is singing, I see the sun go down. I just get a real sense of like a powerful feeling of freedom on this track. As Mike references in the chorus here, uh, moving beyond the frame, seeing a wreath on a grave, it's almost like on this track he is uh, exiting 
uh, his body or this material earthly realm and is becoming some kind of supreme being where he can just become whatever he imagines or something. In a sense, definitely one of his most spiritual tracks too, which I think is fitting considering that the vocal melody here feels a little folky or maybe even gospel inspired to a degree. The song Choir is this really intense spoken word piece with these fluttering, very relentless string arpeggios all over the track that are slathered and reverb. Mike's vocals contrast that by being right up in your face, so claustrophobic, it's almost suffocating. Uh, I love the way the track makes me feel, even though it is a very odd sound. And the song Die For You feels almost like Mike kind of flirting with the sound of trip hop. I get a real Portishead vibe from some of his vocals on this track, from the atmosphere in the introduction of the song. And as soon as the beat flies in, there's something uh, vaguely Radiohead-ish about this point in the track too that I like a lot. Also, it's really refreshing to hear Mike take a boldly different vocal approach on a song like this uh, and have it go over so well. And that's another thing about the variety of this record. It's not only that Mike is going for different instrumental palettes and different musical styles on this record, he's employing different singing styles on this album as well, bringing different emotions too. You know, not every track has that same kind of painful, lonely, very dreary vulnerability to it that I've enjoyed so much about Mike's past work, but I kind of see how he could get to a point where he needs to sort of evolve beyond it. And it's tracks like this where I think he does that really well. And the song Sides uh, sticks out to me as, as not only a favorite, but a really odd moment on the album. And I'm not being dismissive here, but the instrumental on this thing sounds almost like a deconstructed version of the theme song to Twin Peaks, Falling, uh, that Mike had musically revised so that he could legally sing over it. Again, I could be totally wrong. It does sound in a weird way a lot like that song. Uh, maybe it's just a subconscious influence, I'm not so sure. I will say though, I do think Mike brings enough musical and instrumental quirks into the mix so that uh, it's not that obvious. The blaring, searing, clunky guitars that kind of wail their way through the track are pretty odd. Also, there's some guest vocals from Wiseblood on this song that I thought were really great. And once her vocals come in, it became kind of apparent to me that there's a bit of a, a not only a duet, but a duality to this song too. It's kind of like I'm listening to a relationship track where I'm hearing one side and then the other side and, and one person is kind of struggling to get into the emotions or the life of the other or something. Now, there are a lot of great things about these tracks in this album. Uh, however, I do think the fact that Mike is jumping around so much on this record has led to some tracks, some experiments sounding sort of half-baked or, you know, just kind of paling in comparison to the other tracks. Like, I think the venture musically is just not quite as successful. Uh, case in point, the track Run Me Through. It kind of has this smoky, low-key, funky bar band groove to it that didn't really sit all that well with me. Not only that, but I feel like the groove is played at this really patience testing speed. And Mike's vocals just feel so awkward and overly elongated over this instrumental. It's kind of like I'm listening to an endless introduction to something that I, I feel like should have either sped up or changed into something else. The song just feels so one note and ugh, so repetitive. The song Every Night, while I do like the emotional vulnerability of the track, I do think it feels kind of flat and instrumentally pale in comparison to all these other tracks that are so vivid and colorful and bold and off the wall. And I also kind of feel the same way about the song Alan, though I could appreciate that Mike wanted to go simple and somewhat stripped back with the closing track. Um, structurally, the song feels kind of formless and blobby, and I also feel like the instrumental doesn't really have that much tangibility, that much bite to it. Uh, I do sense that the string sections on the track do feel beautiful, but they are so cloudy, they are so vapor-like that they don't really have that much, uh, I guess, push or oomph to them. I'm not really getting whisked away by any of the instrumental passages on this track, which is why I wish that there was a little bit more vocal presence from Mike on the song, especially toward the end where it feels almost like the track is left off with a cliffhanger. Now this wouldn't be the first odd, abrupt 
ending cliffhanger of a finish on a track in, in Mike's discography. But on an album that's just jumping around so much, not the best way to finish the record, especially with the entrance of the album being so grand. While I get the meaning of shape and no shape in the lyrics on the song Wreath, I feel like titling the album No Shape is almost an admission of the album's musical presentation. It's so fractured, it's so hard to predict. And while I do love this record, it's very hard to sum up. And even though I'm pretty sure it's by design, I do think it kind of takes away from the listening experience a little bit, especially with some of the tracks on this thing not really panning out to my ears. Even if I am very enamored, very surprised, and uh, very pleased with a lot of the experiments Mike embarks on on this record for the most part. Hopefully we hear some of these sounds a little more refined and dived into more deeply on a future record that's uh, a touch more cohesive, but as of right now I'm feeling a uh, light to decent eight on this record. tra 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 tran -tran. Have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best. You're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Just leave an angry comment in the comments if you're angry. Perfume Genius. No Shape. Really good album. Give it a listen. Other videos next to my head that you should check out. Subscribe to the channel. Official website too. Forever.